Uh, I'm going to talk about cognitive database. Uh, this is an effort that is going on at IBM Research uh, for the past few years. And we are trying to build a Spark-enabled, uh, Spark-based uh, uh, AI-enabled relational database system. So this is the outline of my talk. I'll first quickly review uh, the word embedding uh, models. Then I'll going to discuss how we use those models uh, for designing the cognitive database system. Then I'm going to talk about a, a new class of uh, SQL-based analytics queries called cognitive intelligence queries. Uh, I'll give an overview of an uh, Spark implementation uh, that uh, we are using currently. And then um, I'm going to talk about a, a case study where we are using the cognitive intelligence queries on a multimodal database consisting of text and uh, images and show how we are able to uh, 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 support uh, uh, inductive reasoning queries in SQL. And I conclude by summary. So uh, I think m most of you are, are familiar with uh, word embedding, which is one of the most popular uh, unsupervised neural network based NLP uh, technique. Um, uh, you know, uh, some word to vec and glove are the two most commonly used examples of uh, the word embedding model. Uh, so word embedding tries to capture uh, meanings of words based on a neighborhood con context. And uh, based on the distribution uh, semantics, the meaning is captured as a collective contributions of words uh, from the uh, uh, input neighborhood. The, the, the model then represents the uh, the meaning as a, uh, a low dimensional vector, which is represents the semantic representation uh, for the words. And the, the vectors are uh, are dense, low dimensional, um, uh, uh, of you know usually between 200 and 300 dimensions, and then these vectors are are used to compute semantic similarity uh, using a, a form of distance matrix, most commonly. Uh, we use cosine similarity uh, as a way of computing similarities between these vectors. So in the cognitive database, we use the, the word embedding approach to uh, support uh, a dual view of the relational data. We use the table as a classical re relational table, but also as a meaningful text where all relational entities, uh, irrespective of type, whether they are text, numeric, uh, you know, uh, SQL date, or you know, images, and so on, are are mapped to text, uh, and the text textification, the process of converting into text, is done without loss of information in the original in in the original table. Then, once we have the uh, text view of the relational table, uh, the word embedding approach is then used to extract. Uh, latent information uh, that is uh, 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 kind of hidden in these database tokens. Uh, and then uh, the, this information is then used to uh, capture and exploit uh, semantic contextual similarities. So in order to achieve that, uh, we have uh, extended the traditional word embedding model that supports only an, uh, sentences in natural control languages such as English um, uh, to support uh, the constraints of the relational model. For example, relational models have primary keys which are unique. Um, uh, relational model, the, sen the, the sentences that are generated from a relational model are not uh, a, uh, a natural language sentences. So the relationship between the words does not follow the traditional assumption of a, let's say, an English sentence where the a word is most closer to the uh, nearby word. So there are a few additional constraints that we have to uh, capture uh, from the relational model, and we have uh, extended the word embedding model to, to do that. So here is a very high-level view of the database. So uh, the word embedding model can be built in two ways. Uh, one way is to um, uh, use the uh, uh, existing database on, that is being queried to generate the model. The second approach is to take an externally built model, which can be built from an unstructured database, such as Wikipedia 
or any other structured data source. It can be a JSON file, CSV, or any other relational table. Uh, this model is then uh, used by the, the SQL subsystem uh, and uh, uh, to invoke uh, queries on the underlying database. The input is a relational table, output is a relational table, but the queries that are executed are done using both the relational data as well as the model that is being, uh, that is either internal or external to the database. The, the, the key, uh, I guess, property of the cognitive database and which, that, which, is, which separates it from the traditional relational uh, the database models is the, uh, the retrieval is based on semantic context uh, rather than the data values. So if you look at any existing SQL query, the where predicate does the comparison based on the value of the data type. In, in this case, we are, we, we are not comparing the data value, but we are comparing the context of a relational token that is captured by the word embedding model. Secondly, unlike the uh, you know, uh, analytics database, and an excellent example of an analytics database is a, a, a Spark data frame that is, it is, which is used as an input to any other you know, Spark ML. So in this case, it, this can be viewed as a database that stores features and you know, then stores the results of the analytic uh, model. Uh, unlike such approaches, in our case, the, the tokens of a relational database are viewed as input to a neural network models, and the latent features of, the, 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 uh, the, of these tokens are then extracted by the, the word embedding model and then used in standard SQL-based, um, uh, what we call cognitive intelligence queries. These queries, uh, and I'm, I, I will have examples of, uh, in a follow-on slide, so these queries use uh, typed relational variables like you do in a, in a standard SQL query, uh, but the model that is used in these uh, cognitive intelligence queries it is built on untyped strings that are generated by the textification process. So here is a, a, a concrete example. So it's a very simple customer analytics database. So uh, a, a row, as a, as a simplistic example, a row is considered as a sentence, um, and the row will have data of different types. It is customer A is a string, 916 can be a date, uh, there are you know, strings, there are then um, uh, uh, a, a set of items, uh, you know, like crayons, folders, etc., and then there are numeric values. We convert these uh, the different data types into a text format, and then this e uh, equivalent sentence, uh, English language-like sentence, is sent to the data mo uh, to the word embedding model, which generates a meaning vector for every token, uh, and then the the meaning vector is then used by the the cognitive intelligence queries, and it is used for computing um, uh, semantic similarity. So in this case, uh, let's focus on the customer uh, uh, the the customer ID strings. So the meaning of customer ID, or let's say customer D here in this example, will be uh, impacted by all the tokens in the context. For example, Walmart, NY, uh, stationery, crayons, folders, etc., and a numeric value of 25, and I'll, I'll get to that later. Uh, so the, if you compare meanings of two customers, they will be similar if they, they share uh, similar tokens in, in their uh, the neighborhood that is being used to build the, the embedding model. So in this case, the customer A would be similar to customer C because they, there are, they, they share you know, fresh produce, bananas, and so on, and customer D would be similar to customer B uh, because they share a lot of uh, other common uh, you know, uh, uh, tokens, stationaries, crayons, and et cetera. So here is actually a very a key aspect. The, 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 the sentence or the context that is used to build the word embedding model, it is a reflection of the relational view. So if you take a, a view of this table, uh, for example, if you just consider customer, customer ID, merchant, 
uh, items, you are going to generate a different sentence, and then you are going to, the, the same tokens, custom, uh, the customer A or customer D, are going to have a different meaning. So, so the, the, the word embedding model that is built from a relational table is, it basically mimics the relational view that is being used for, for querying purposes. So once we build the, the vectors, um, we, we can use that to invoke the, the SQL uh, queries. And these queries sub provide new kinds of semantic capabilities that are not currently available in any of the SQL systems. And these include semantic similarity and dissimilarity uh, over both uh, sequences and uh, sets of tokens, uh, semantic clustering, um, then a semantic form of OLAP, you know, we can do group by roll up, um, not based on the value, but b based on the semantic relationships. And we have some examples, and I can actually uh, show them offline. Um, the, another interesting type of queries uh, that is borrowed from the NLP side is an inductive reasoning queries. Uh, and examples of that includes you know, analogies, semantic clustering, and, um, uh, and clustered analogies. Uh, and I'm going to show an example of that. Um, and then we have uh, semantic relational operations where you can do join, projection, um, uh, and other existing relational uh, operations uh, not based on value, but based on semantic similarities or dissimilarities. Uh, furthermore, these queries can work uh, uh, on models that are trained by, from the input database, as well as from an externally trained model, which can be built on, you know, uh, from any unstructured source. So that's, a, uh, that's, I think, is a very powerful concept, uh, so which kind of merges both structured uh, uh, knowledge with, you know, unstructured uh, external knowledge. And, and moreover, we also support uh, multiple data types. Uh, currently, our implementation supports text, and numeric values, and images. So here is an example of a CI query. This is uh, uh, written in uh, Spark SQL. And as you will see, this is uh, a standard uh, SQL query uh, with a, a user-defined function that is marked in red. Um, the user-defined function takes typed uh, SQL variables. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, these variables can be uh, sets or sequences. Uh, for example, in the, uh, if you go back to our exam, uh, example here, the, the value of the item variable would be uh, a set of you know, bananas and apples. But there are scenarios such as you know, um, uh, uh, ingredients in a food item or a medicine where the order of ingredients is important. In that case, the, 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 we can also view uh, the, the, the kind of a collection of items as a sequence. So the UDF uh, takes the input relational variables, uh, fetches the vectors from the uh, associated word embedding model, and then uh, computes semantic similarities between the, the input set of uh, uh, the relational variables and re returns a score, which is then used uh, f f uh, in, the, in, the, in the predicate. And uh, so here, this query would basically find out uh, all uh, vendors that are similar. Uh, and, this, uh, the, and I will actually show more uh, detailed UDFs later on. Um, so we have been uh, uh, testing the database for, uh, on a variety of realistic workloads. And uh, uh, here are some of the application domains where this is uh, which we have found to be very useful. Uh, for example, analysis over multimodal data, uh, which can be in retail, let's say, you know, uh, doing product comparisons or you, based on pictures, uh, comparing health uh, records associated with, you know, fMRI images or so on. Um, let's say comparing claims based on, uh, you know, uh, pictures of accidents. Um, entity similarity queries, which are very commonplace in customer analytics, uh, IT ticket management, um, even time series data. Uh, cognitive or semantic OLAP, uh, you know, it is very useful in majority of finance or insurance workloads. Um, 
entity resolution is another of a very useful scenario uh, where we can do data imputation and find out uh, you know whether a particular entity is you know similar to another entity with you know misplaced or incomplete values so this is a broader class of master data management workloads um, and recently we have also started looking at uh, time series data uh, which is uh, clearly very commonplace in IOT and health. So here is a kind of a, uh, uh, the, the three stage uh, uh, kind of summary of the uh, implementation. Uh, so we have a ETL a stage uh, and um, there we, the, the process of textification takes place and this picture shows a data in a relational table, which is then converted into a text domain. Um, and you know, optionally, they, we may also have uh, external text source. And based on that, we, uh, the, the word embedding model uh, computes the learned vectors. These vectors are then stored in a, a relational system table. Uh, uh, and you know, this can also be extended uh, by uh, uh, using other pre-computed models. Uh, the, these, uh, 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 these vectors are then used by uh, the UDF in the CI queries, which operate on input relations and return uh, relations as a result. So uh, here is a kind of a, um, a schematic of the textification process, especially for supporting multiple uh, types of data uh, of types. Um, so first of all, uh, we do from a relational table, we first do some limited data cleaning. And for text, uh, we uh, kind of create unique tokens that may involve maybe pre, uh, prefacing the, the, the value of a, uh, uh, of a column attribute by the, the schema type. Uh, for the numerical values, we do a clustering or bucketing. I know uh, most common way of doing it is doing using k-means. You know, we, uh, we, this is, we, we have very simple py, uh, uh, Python scripts that use uh, NumPy uh, k-means uh, algorithm. Um, and then use the cluster uh, ID um, uh, as a unique token to represent a numerical value. Uh, so this is important. So when the, the model is built, the numerical value gets replaced by a string that uh, kind of reflects the cluster in which the value belongs. Um, and on the image side, um, there are two possibilities. One is uh, we, we, we assume that the, the, there will be some additional features for a particular image. Uh, let's say the insurance claim agent has given some description. So we process those features, uh, process the text and create features. Other way is to use uh, uh, existing pre-trained neural network model, for example, the, the Watson visual recognition service, and we can send images to it and get, that, uh, you know, get the features uh, using an existing model, and then use those features uh, uh, as an input to the, uh, to the word embedding model, and when, you know, uh, so uh, in, in a combined scenario, the, the text, the numeric value, and then images, they all get translated into uh, a, a uniform text representation, which then leads to the, a multimodal uh, word embedding model. So, so why, why is Spark important? So there are actually several reasons why we use Spark. Uh, first of all, it gives us a, a ability to, uh, to load data of multiple types, whether it can be relational table, CSV files, JSON, and you know, in our case, um, kicks, IMS data, and so different types of data format. Uh, secondly, it is portable. So we have a current implementation is done on 2.20. It actually works on 2.30 as well. Uh, it's a data frames based representation. Uh, it runs on uh, all IBM hardware, including IBM Z, ZOS, and Z Linux the IBM P systems, both on AIX and, and Linux, and uh, obviously x86. Um, then uh, we have support for standardized SQL queries. Um, then uh, we can support 
uh, we have opportunity of acceleration. So some of the uh, core computational kernels in the, in the queries, and I'll get to that, uh, we have the opportunity to accelerate it on GPU, and we are, uh, we are currently integrating that in, the, in our Spark implementation. Uh, finally, we have uh, the, 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 from a user perspective, this uh, database, uh, we can expose it both to the database community uh, through um, uh, Spark SQL and with UDF, and through the data science community uh, through you know, PySpark, Pandas APIs that are exposed uh, via Jupyter. So here is another uh, view of the uh, execution flow. Uh, again, it's a Spark pipeline. We, s we start with uh, an input table, uh, which is converted into a train model, invoked via SQL query. The UDF then computes, uh, uh, does the similarity computation, which can be GPU accelerated, and the return is an another output table. And, and in a Spark implementation, uh, the, we have a Spark DF, the input Spark data frame, there is a specialized word embedding model that uh, uh, generates uh, uh, a word embedding vectors, which are again loaded in Spark DF. Um, uh, we want to now move to Parquet as well. Um, then the data is uh, you know, invoked uh, or operated by Spark SQL, uh, which re again re result in a Spark data, uh, data, uh, data frame as output. And here is just a screenshot. So we have uh, all the data, you know, all the operations uh, exposed through uh, Jupyter. So you know, the data scientists as well can also, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, operate on the the cognitive database through their, you know, favorite uh, uh, favorite approach, which is you know, uh, different than the traditional SQL-based uh, database uh, usage. So, so now I'll move to the final example. So to do this, you know, I've taken a simple example of, of a multimodal database that has uh, text and images. And I'm going to show, I'm using images from uh, ImageNet dataset. Uh, however, this can be, you know, pe pe uh, photos of uh, people, or it can be health images, or it can be, you know, product images from the retail and so on. So uh, in a, in a rea realistic scenario, there are, you know, uh, different variations. So the first thing we do is we uh, send those images to Watson VRS and uh, use those features to build a, a trained, uh, a, the internal training database, uh, which is then sent to the word embedding model. The word, embed the word embedding model creates vectors for every unique token, and while, while doing that, it basically captures the relationship between non-image features, such as you know, national park, uh, country, uh, over image features, such as you know, uh, elephant na uh, animal name, class, dietary habits, and so on. So uh, the, the resultant vectors then we can use to kind of uh, 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 to, to, to support new kinds of uh, queries such as uh, inductive reasoning queries. So uh, to give an example, uh, one, one type of inductive reasoning query is called um, semantic clustering. So the idea is you are given an uh, input set of tokens and the semantic clustering query, the, the, the goal is to uh, give a set of input set of uh, entities, return an entity that shares the common feature with the input entity. So in this case, we are, uh, we are given three images, uh, lion, vulture, and shark, and, and we want to, f the, want to find a set of uh, uh, images that share a common feature between these three images. And here is the Spark SQL query, and here is a, a UDF that computes the, that implements the semantic clustering. Now the important thing here is the user has no idea about the type of animal. This is all internally uh, computed. And secondly, uh, the, the features are also extracted automatically. The, the, the input table has no notion of the features that are used uh, for these queries. So the word embedding query uh, uh, does, you know, uh, uh, the implementation 
uh, identifies the common feature, and in this case, it's carnivores. All of them, uh, although they are of different types, they're all carnivores. So the result we get is, uh, these are the top results, is a uh, Andean condor, which is a, a, a bird of prey, uh, a wolverine, which is again a mammal uh, and a carnivore, and then some sort of animal called Tyra, we checked it was, uh, there is an animal and which is also a carnivore. So this is actually quite surprising that we are now, the, the word embedding automatically able to extract features and return, uh, you know, uh, uh, the entities that also uh, are very similar to the input token. Other example, and this is actually a very common use case from the NLP domain is uh, 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 analogy query. And here what we, the, the, the example is we are given uh, from a reptile to monitor lizard, uh, uh, aquatic vertebrate to what? So the idea is uh, monitor lizard is an example of vertebrate. Give me images that are types of aquatic vertebrate. And what we get is uh, all the fishes, photos of fishes of spiny uh, uh, finned fish, and these are some of the, the images that we give as a, re as a result. Now, the last query is, uh, is quite interesting. So this demonstrates the use of external knowledge base. So in this case, what we have done is uh, the, there is a, a, a page on Wikipedia that describes so-called hypercarnivores, where the animals have uh, their food intake is at least 90% is a meat. Uh, so we have built the model from Wikipedia and then uh, use that model to query the, the database. The, 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 the goal of the query is give me pictures of hypercarnivores. But you know, as you are aware, the database, the original database has no notion of a hypercarnivore. That relationship is extracted or, or uh, is imported from the externally trained model. So this is basically an example of transfer learning. Uh, and we use that externally trained model in our UDF and you know, compute the, the, to get the images that uh, you know, satisfy the relationship. And the, the answer of this query is uh, Hainas. So you know, this is another example where uh, you know, we can actually use an externally trained model uh, and get some uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, results from an existing relational table. So just to emphasize here that this capability provides semantic, uh, you know, uh, s semantic querying over relational data using standard SQL, uh, and it can support uh, multiple data types. So uh, here is my summary. Um, and so this is an example of you know, how we are transparently uh, integrating uh, AI into uh, an existing relational system uh, and uh, 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 providing uh, new capabilities uh, to existing users. And for more information, we have some archive papers that people can look at. Okay, thank you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, we have just a minute for questions. Otherwise, we can always continue to bug Rajesh outside. So we can ha take one question. Uh, how, how is this any different from the Google search which what they have implemented with Kinkade? I don't know whether... Uh, if if I, you I, could re repeat the question. So how is it different from Google search with images? Yes. Uh, I think they do not have the, uh, the, the cognitive OLAP capability, the cognitive query capabilities. Uh, they just do semantic similarities. They don't support analogies. They don't support semantic clustering. So that I think is a is a difference. And this is SQL based, so that's another difference. All right, thank you. All right, big round of applause for Rajesh.